So in this video, I'm gonna go over six money truths that I wish someone would have told me sooner, like much sooner, years ago even. You know, well, in our adult lives at some point, we get this moment where we're like, man, I really wish I would have known this much earlier. It would have made my life a lot easier. I would have done a lot of things differently. And so this, per the purpose of this video is to help anyone. There's nothing that sucks worse than being in your mid twenties and being like, man, Nobody ever taught me this. School never teaches you certain things. Sometimes your parents don't get around to teach you certain things. Sometimes they don't even know. You know, so that's what the purpose of this video is. All right, money truth number one, straight up. Looking rich makes you poor. I'll say that again. Looking rich makes you poor. Okay, so I'm going to break it down from an entry level perspective and from a, a six figure level perspective. So let's let's go back to like high school when people are first starting to get jobs, right? And they get their first check and it's like, I don't know, 200, 250 bucks for working like two weeks or whatever, right? And so then you're like, oh, okay, I'm making some money now. Now I can buy this, now I can buy that. And then you see them with the, 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 the latest Jordans on, or you know, you'll see them with the newest gaming console or a big TV. And, and it, it goes uphill too. Like whenever, somebody who's got six figures, you know, you, you just landed your first six figure job. Okay, what do you do? You go out and buy a freaking $700,000 house in Saying, right? That's just my opinion, but just, just seriously though, like you, you want to look rich, so you have the seven hundred thousand dollar house, and then you have the brand new uh, Escalade or Mercedes outside, and you have the the polo shirts on, and then you have the the Rolex watches on, and it just gets out of control. Like no matter what level you look at, it's crazy. That's why you'll find that some people can make well over six figures and still be living paycheck to paycheck. While somebody who's making 50K a year could be sitting pretty comfortable because they know how to save their money. So what the takeaway for this one is, just because you have money doesn't mean you should spend it because you wanna show off to some people because you wanna show them how new your car is or how big your house is or how nice your watch is, right? How nice your shoes are. That stuff in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter. Like, yeah, you can definitely treat yourself every now and then, but going out and buying all these things just because you think you can, when you're spending more than what you actually make a year, that's a telltale sign that you're doing something wrong. So just to be completely, perfectly honest with you guys, looking rich makes you look poor. Number two, school does not equal financial success. It just doesn't. I grew up under the impression that I had to go to college because I, I like to express my dreams a lot when I was younger. Like, I wanna be able to make this much, I wanna be able to do that, and I wanna be able to buy this and, and do that, and blah, blah, blah. Well, they're like, okay, well, if you do that, you're definitely gonna have to go to college. And so I was really strongly under the impression that you had to, had to go to school, had to go to college, you know, had to get a degree, I had to get a degree that was that had the reputation of paying you a high salary. That's the impression I was under. And then what did I find out right after I graduated? That I was making good money, but I found that there's people on YouTube like two, three years younger than me, or even my age, making twice, triple the amount I was making a year. And they either dropped out of college or just never went to college. This is a hard pill to swallow. You spent all that money to go to school and you just find that, it, not, not to say that what they're doing is, or what they did is easy by any means. It's just saying that I spent all this freaking money on something that I was told from the time I was you know, a baby basically that I had to do it. I had to go to school in order to, to get that success. So that's not the case. There's so many people who graduate in the same class where some of them get really good jobs and then a lot of them are looking for work for the next year, the next two years, or they go to McDonald's or they go to like Food Line or like some grocery store. It's 
school does not equal financial success. Look at doctors, look at lawyers. Yeah, they might be pulling 160, you know what I'm saying, 150 every year, but how much debt are they in? We gotta look at it that way. Not all of them are in debt, granted. Some of them were so smart, they got through school with grants and scholarships and didn't have to pay anything, or they had minimal debt. But I'm talking about the people who were half a million in debt. Why would you go half a million in debt for you know a hundred thousand dollars a year you see what i'm saying it's like weigh your options is all i'm saying weigh your options because <laughs> school is not the only way to be successful i can make a whole video on that if you guys want me to say something in the comments if you want me to this one believe it or not guys i just found this out like i think i was i was uh pretty sure i was 21 when i found out about this i'm 24 now there's active income and there's passive income. Active income is trading your time for money, i.e. going to work, i.e. cutting somebody's grass for 20, 30 bucks, right? It's just saying, hey, for my time and for my work, I get this amount of money in return. And with that, it's very easy to cap it. It's very easy to say, well, I'm not gonna pay you more than $40 an hour. Business need, we have to save company money. Whereas passive income is something where you put your time in up front or you put your money, uh, you put in money up front and that's for a return way down the line or even maybe not way down the line, maybe a month or some years, whatever the case is down the line. And so the way that works is like, for example, YouTube, it's like you put up a bunch of time up front for YouTube, you put, it, you put up a lot of videos, you spend a lot of hours of your time to make these videos whenever you have the free time for one day to maybe get monetized on YouTube, to, to one day get monetized on YouTube. That's how it works. Or investing is, is a way you get passive income from putting money up, up front. You would just put in you know X amount of dollars, like say $500 or something a month in an investment account and it'll grow with inflation and it'll grow with the market as that grows as well. And you'll see that over time, you will get money pretty much on a cons consistent basis with passive income. Not to say that the amounts of money will be consistent, but you will get money on a consistent basis. So like when you're sleeping, you'll still be getting paid. Like you're not trading your time anymore because you put so much time up front, you've added so much value to the world up front that now you're getting paid for your efforts tenfold. Like you're, you're not gonna stop getting paid, even if it's $50 a month for the rest of your life. That's $50 a month for the rest of your life that you don't ever have to work for. That, that's just coming regardless of it. Just imagine having multiple streams of passive income or even just two very focused streams of passive income, one from money, one from your time or both from your time or whatever the, the mix is, you could actually build up so much streams of income that like, it can replace what your job is making you and you can bank your paycheck. So like, it blew my mind when I figured out there was such a thing as passive income. I was like, what? Because again, grew up thinking you have to go to work to get money. Cause I was like, you know, I'd be like, hey, mom, dad, how do I make money? Get a job. Oh, okay. And that was my truth, right? So that's just a simple example of passive income versus active income. Oh, this is a key one right here. Debt should be avoided. Debt should be avoided. Didn't even know what debt was until I got into debt. Student loan debt, that is. But now, like, in all seriousness, you grow up around people who are just like, yeah, I'll just put it on my credit card. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, yeah, I'll just, uh, I won't buy it in cash. I'll just have monthly payments. Whenever you're dealing with either one, that's that's debt. That's money that you haven't paid yet. So you have to pay for a set amount of time until it's paid off. The ideal situation is that you pay for things in cash, right? So for example, my car, bought it in cash. Was it expensive? No, not really. It's a used car, nice car, used car. Paid for it in cash. I don't have to worry about car payments, right? Um, um, you know, my laptop, bought it in cash. You don't want to have payments on these things, especially if it's on a credit card. That's like 
interest. So miss a payment if you want to, then you will really be paying for it. And you know, you think now, you don't think about it right now because like, yeah, it's a, it's a $1,200 laptop. I don't have to pay $60 a month until it's paid off. It's like, okay, well, divide 1200 by 60 and tell me how long you're gonna be paying that off. That's a pretty long time to be paying money that would be, you know, an internet bill for something that you could have just bought in cash up front. Save up, buy it in cash. A good rule of thumb is if you cannot buy it in cash, you cannot afford it. That's how that works. Uh, the, and of course, houses are different. Like you're probably not gonna have a quarter million on you to just, you know, put down on a house, right? So some there's there's some forms of debt that are gonna be unavoidable. But my my take my takeaway that I want you guys to have is you want to avoid debt. Don't just say don't be so quick to say, yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just put it on my credit card or or yeah, I'll just take out a loan. Don't do that. Because loans come with unforeseen expenses. They come with interest rates. And generally, they come with different interest rates, especially if you get like five different ones with, you know, like one has 1,200 on it, one has 1,300, one has 3,000, one has 5,000. They're gonna have different interest rates on them. You don't wanna fall into that trap. You really, really don't. Cause you'll be paying, especially if you're not good with managing money, you'll be paying for 10, 15, maybe, you know, 20 years for the rest of your life even. So you wanna avoid debt at all costs. That's what I really, really wish I would have known early on. And I already touched on this one, but I'll just reiterate it. The big money truth that I learned, and it was, the way I learned it, it was through, it was through my own, my own speculation, or my, my own way of thinking really. You know, when I first started working, I was like, man, I'm making good money. I was like, oh wait, I have bills now, but I'm still able to save a decent amount of money every month. And I was like, wait a minute, I better be performing like 100% of the time because what, what if something happens and I get let go? Oh crap, That's this is my only stream of income. What am I going to do? You know what I mean? And when, you, when I had that moment, I was like, yo, uh, -uh nope. I'm not going out like that. I'm gonna find a second gig. I'm gonna find a second stream of income. I'm gonna find a way to make myself more money on the side in case of an emergency. I always, I, I am never going to have to worry about money. That was that was my mindset at the time, and it still is, and it should really be everyone's mindset. Like you don't want to rely on one stream of income because that's doing exactly what they tell you not to do. It's putting all of your eggs in one basket. You're saying that, hey, I have, I, I'm, will, I'm willing to bet my livelihood that this one stream of income, that, that I can count on this one stream of income for the rest of my life. That's basically what you're saying when you, when you decide to stick with one stream of income and one stream of income only. And that is the honest truth. So it's extremely important to have more than one stream of income. It doesn't necessarily have to be passive. It could both be active. You just be tired, but like, you want to have that that security because the, 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 the sad truth is most people are one missed paycheck away from being completely broke and not having anything and that's sad to say but it's true so you want to what can you do think this is my question to you what can you do to have another stream of income this one right here is something that goes over the, the, the most brilliant people's heads for whatever reason. Don't know why, but I'm gonna address it right now. Your retirement plan needs to happen ASAP. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Like, it has to happen. Like your 401k, your Roth IRA, whatever your investment account is for your retirement, it needs to be set up, like the moment you start working full-time job that is just or, or if you're starting your own business you need to set that up it take what it does is for y'all who don't know it sets a portion of what you get paid every month and then you know it goes it rises with the market but then it also gets matched by the company and some other things I'm, I'm not like the king of investing or anything but it's a good thing like it's a good thing for your future and if you're working full-time especially you need to have it set up so like most people I'd say this we'll give it a range We'll say between, people between the ages of 18 and 25 are just now starting their first full-time jobs, right? And guess what? They don't set up 401ks right away for some reason. I only know a handful of people 
who have set it up right away. And this is what I was talking about. I learned about this in college. Like I was 21, I was just about to graduate and I learned about the time value of money and I learned about, you know, how, how, how investing is exponential. So it's gonna look incremental at first and then out of nowhere, it's gonna go way up in the millions, of course. And so the one thing that affects the time value of money is how late, how long you wait to put money in there. So if the 18 year old who just started his full-time job today puts, you know, starts putting a fraction of, of their, their wages in there, guess what? Eventually, their money's gonna skyrocket. So by the time they're 30, they'll have hundreds of thousands of dollars in there. I'm talking 200,000, 300,000. It can happen, seriously, it can happen. Especially if you pick a good percentage to go in there. I'm not trying to bore y'all or nothing, but look, here's the key takeaway. I can't tell you how many people I've sat down with who are 40, 50 years old, 35 years old, who haven't set up a 401k. And I, I instantly light a fire under them. I'm like, hey guys, you have to get your 401k down. Like you don't understand. Like if you want to retire, that's what a 401k is for. If you haven't set it up, you need to set it up. And then I explain it to them, just like I explained it to you guys. If you wait till you're 40, so if the retirement age that you, if you want to retire at 60 and you start putting money in your 401k at 40, think about how hard it is and how long it's going to take to build up to the amount that if you would have started investing at 18, then you would have, you know, you would have been super far along. You'd probably be able to retire at 45, 50, 55. My point is before 60. But if you start putting it in at like 40, 41, 45, and you want to retire at 60, you're going to have to be making some serious, serious money. You're going to have to. You're going to have to put some serious money away to even get close to what you would if you when you started investing at an early age in, into your 401k. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. These are the six money truths that I wish someone would have taught me sooner. And hopefully I help somebody out. So if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. This channel is all about personal finance, personal growth and life goals. And that's what, what I'm here for. So thanks guys. Thanks so much for watching. Control you, control your finances, control your life.